Welcome back. In part two, we visit four more of the 10 museums at Ironbridge with all the information you need for an exciting visit back in time. So stick around. We head east of Ironbridge town to visit the Coalport China Museum, the stunning canal and the tar tunnels. Parking is available with some free spaces next to the Shakespeare Inn pub, which incidentally is a nice place to grab some lunch. It's less crowded than the town. At the bottom of Bliss's Hill, right on the bridge, are a few steps you can easily miss that take you down to some cute cottages. Here is the entrance to the tar tunnels. This also gives you views of some railway tracks that are part of the Hay Incline Plain, which we'll cover in a minute. The Shropshire Canal used to pass right above at the top of Bliss's Hill, a small part of which still remains inside the Bliss Hill Victorian town, which we'll visit in part three. In order to get goods from the Shropshire Canal down to Coalport Canal, they thought they would try to dig a tunnel to link them. But during this excavation, they struck a natural bitumen spring. The tunnel idea was abandoned in favor of the Hay Incline Plain, and they harvested the bitumen instead. Today, you can still see bitumen oozing from the tunnel walls, but they are only open on Wednesdays now for limited tours. Check out ironbridgeorg.uk website for full details. Also, due to a dangerous build-up of gas, you can no longer walk down the tunnel as we did a few years back. Bit of a shame, really. The Hay Incline Plain was built by William Reynolds and started operation in 1793, raising and lowering tub boats made from cast iron and likely carrying coal. The weight of the tub boat at the top rolling down the track raised the empty tub at the bottom, a little bit like a funicular. The process of getting it on and off the tracks is a bit more involved and you can learn and see examples of this at the Colebrookdale Iron Museum we visited in part one. The little cottage on the corner here is called Tub Boat Cottage and is available for hire if you're interested to stay in this beautiful area. We'll put a link in our description for you. Nope, we're not affiliated with them. We don't get any commission. This was just to help you out. Walking along the canal with the ducks, you can imagine the hive of activity on this stretch 200 years ago, as up to six barges an hour moved the goods to the Coalport China factory, where we're heading right now. As industry developed and this local area became more successful, new factories popped up and behind me is Coalport China, uh, very famous in England, very much uh, part of the Victorian era. And this will take you through the history of teapots and teacups, but it's closed at the moment due to COVID and also because of the storms that were uh, back in February. Of course, it was not just tea sets, but incredible porcelain work from vases to figurines and much more. Opened in 1795 by John Rose, production continued until 1926 when it moved to Staffordshire and became part of the Wedgwood Group. Even though it's closed, there is a tea room open and you can still walk around the outside buildings for free if you don't have the Iron Bridge ticket. The latest information is that all the closed museums expect to reopen again late 2020. Check out the website for more details. Walking back to the tar tunnels, you can cross the bridge at Jackfield and look out over the River Severn. And when open, there is a lovely pub called the Boat Inn, sadly closed at the moment due to the February flooding. So you can see here the pubs recorded all the flooding in the area over the last hundred or so years. And you can see right virtually here at the top is February uh, 2020, when they had exceptionally high levels that flooded this whole area and virtually the whole ground floor of this pub, but not as bad as 1946 when it was just higher. Moving on, we head for Jackfield Tile Museum. The Victorians went crazy for decorative tiles and Jackfield was at the heart of this. 
The museum showcases the industry between 1840 and 1960, all housed in an old tile factory owned by Craven Dunhill, acquired by Ironbridge Trust in 1983. Inside, you are treated to a building constructed in a Gothic Revival style, which is simply quite beautiful in our opinion. Learn about the tile making process, walk through galleries of frises and decorative tile displays. See some of the old factory offices and design rooms as laid out 150 years ago. Marvel at the reconstruction of Victorian building interiors like a pub, church, butchers and even a tube station, all of which were commonly dressed in this style of tile decoration back in the day. With hundreds of years of history, Jackfield has a large collection of tile moulds that would have been used to make the vast quantities of decorative tiles. This important collection is preserved for future reference and use if needed. Craven Dunhill Company returned to Jackfield in 2000 and run a multi-million pound business to this day, making decorative tiles, cornicing and much more, keeping alive the Victorian tradition. At the end of the tour you can visit the original updraft bottle kilns used by the factory. Before we leave, attached to the Jackfield factory is a more modern artisan arts centre called Fusion. You can pop in here and see some of the locals' artwork and craft designs. Moving on to the next town, Broseley was home to the famous clay pipe making factory with 400 years history under its belt. The Victorians loved to puff on a Broseley pipe and today the factory provides a glimpse of this bygone era. Driving through this market town, it has pretty shops, bars and cafes worth stopping for. Sadly, the museum is only open summer months and we just missed it, so we'll have to be content with a quick view from outside. In part three, we head back to when Victoria was on the throne at Bliss Hill, Victorian town. Join us for a nostalgic look at life 150 years ago in this living museum. Subscribe now so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching. Happy travels from the Memory Seekers.